It's widely accepted that the decision-making parts of brains doesn't fully develop until age 25 or even later. But somehow the U.S. justice system has not fully caught up to that science. And in fact, the current Supreme Court is pushing it even further behind. A series of past Supreme Court decisions led to 31 states and D.C. either banning life without parole sentences for crimes committed by juveniles or not having anyone serving such a sentence because the high court declared judges have to consider how a defendant's age affects culpability. But then a few months back, the new conservative majority issued another ruling that makes it easier to sentence minors to life behind bars to die in prison, saying essentially the judges do not have to justify their decisions in sentencing. As author and law school professor Catherine Blake writes in a recent Washington Post piece, the underlying rationale is that some children are too bad to be treated like children or too bad to ever be good again. And for her, that broken system is personal. After a 16-year-old cousin suffered what was diagnosed as a psychotic break, murdered a 9-year-old boy, was convicted as an adult, and sentenced to life without parole. She goes on to write, What does a child deserve who has taken another life? Our American exceptionalism speaks volumes. We are the only country in the world that sentences young people to die in adult prisons. Catherine Blake joins me now. She's also an adjunct professor at Vermont Law School's Center for Justice Reform, and she's the author of The Uninnocent, Notes on Violence and Mercy. Catherine, thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. How old is your cousin now, and how's he doing in prison? So he is, let me think about this. Let me do the quick math. Um, the crime was committed in 2010, and so he is 27 years old. How's he doing there? Um, you know, I think he's worked really hard to build a life for himself. Um, we are in touch pretty frequently, uh, but I don't want to speak for him. I think it's um, it's not a good place to be, obviously, and it's really hard when you end up there young, as he did, um, because... Go ahead. You write that most juveniles, while he is taking Bible classes and seems to be growing and, and maturing that most juveniles in uh, uh, adult prisons don't fare so well? well? Many do not. Of course, it depends on where they end up. But in general, incarceration um, is not good for people who are um, still, as you mentioned, the brain sciences, um, their brains are still developing. And so if you incarcerate somebody whose brain is still developing, that's not, um, that doesn't facilitate rehabilitation, just full stop. Do I remember the a number right from your piece that the uh, suicide rate for uh, juveniles in adult prisons is 36 times what it is for juveniles who put in prisons per specifically for younger people? That's right. That's amazing. And also, you write that, uh, not shockingly for anyone who reads or thinks about the criminal justice system, you're much more likely to be sentenced to an adult prison or transferred if you're a juvenile, if you're black, and you're much more likely to be sentenced to life without parole as a juvenile if you are black, correct? That's right. I think 62% of people serving life sentences without the possibility for parole are black. You know, uh, I mentioned in the lead to this that you lay out that the Supreme Court was moving in one direction for years. Mm -hmm. Death penalty for juveniles was unconstitutional. Uh, mandatory life without parole then was unconstitutional. And then, mm -hmm. as is not surprising, as they appear to be on the verge of doing it on a number of issues, they reverse course. But as I mentioned, half the states have banned a uh, life without possibility of parole. What's the rationale in those? Uh, I know there's not a, uh, it's not common in every single one. Is it too young to be unfixable, incorrigible? Or what's the dominant theme that gets legislatures or courts and states there? Well, I think the Supreme Court's momentum was actually quite persuasive in terms of convincing states to take action at the state level. Um, they they made it quite clear what they believed. They stopped short of um, declaring life sentences unconstitutional for juveniles, but in dicta, they said that this should be done extremely infrequently, only in the rarest cases. And I think many states um, were persuaded by the Supreme Court's reasoning, um, which is both... Um, so there's sort of two prongs. One, young people have an enhanced capacity to change, right, based on their youth. Mm -hmm. And then two, um, young people are much more vulnerable 
based on their age, especially if they end up in adult facilities. We should say the Massachusetts Supreme Judicial Court, our highest court, did determine that life without parole for a juvenile across the board was unconstitutional. You know, when I'm reading your piece, I was really surprised, maybe I shouldn't have been, when I got near the end and you wrote the following, I don't know what should happen to him, meaning to your cousin. Uh, mm -hmm. You make a really powerful case that sentencing a uh, young person, no matter how horrific his or her crime is, to life without parole is, you don't say cruel and unusual punishment. Those are my words, yeah. and I don't mean them as a term of art. Maybe I do. Why don't you know? Why are you in doubt as to what should happen to your cousin? You know, in part, I think, because I'm so close to the story and because I care about him, I don't trust my own... I don't trust my own desires in this department. So it's it's too close for me to know in this particular case. I also think that with certain kinds of mental illnesses, it is really hard to know whether somebody is um, healed, is whole, or is still quote unquote broken. Um, and because I'm not a doctor, I can't know that. And, but, but, but do I believe that he should have the opportunity for parole? Absolutely. Yeah, I think he should have a chance, yeah. How relevant is it what, I mean, you, sh you show what I consider to be an appropriate amount of understanding or sympathy, I guess I should say, for victims who do want justice and justice to someone who yeah. lost someone they love, I'm assuming, and I might feel this way too, I don't care if he's 16 right. or 116, the person I love is gone because of him. Uh, you do show a lot of sympathy and at least attempted understanding of those emotions. Thank you for saying that. I, um, you know, I think that was not what many people who read that op-ed actually thought. Mm. Many people who read the op-ed seemed to think that I was um, insensitive or um, just inconsiderate of the victim's perspective. I got a lot of that feedback. But I think th there's no way to judge a person who's experiencing that kind of unimaginable pain. Yeah. So. You know, Catherine, you seem to be, based on what you said a minute ago about you're too close to the situation with your cousin, it's mm -hmm. that you, am I correct in saying that you think that there should not be an across the board ruling like the SJC in this state did, but rather it should be a case by case person by person, defendant by defendant analysis. If you uh, could write no. the law, what would it be? I have No, I, yeah, so absolutely there should be a categorical ban on mm -hmm. juvenile life sentences without parole. I only meant that I don't know whether he should actually be released from prison mm -hmm. because I can't possibly make that determination. But should he have the opportunity for parole? Absolutely, and all people should. That should be an across the board thing. Do you get any sense, do you worry about, uh, as a follower of the Supreme Court, I'm sure in your work and your obviously personal, do you worry that the Supreme Court is going in the ap absolute opposite direction on this issue based on what they did in the spring? Yeah, I think everyone should be worried about the Supreme Court going in all sorts of directions. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, yeah, some of us are. Uh, Catherine Blake, thanks for the piece. People should read it. I can't wait to read your book. Thank you so much for your time. Thank I really you. appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Thank I appreciate you. It.